uh, Scotty Tuhati was telling me, come on in here, Scotty. Scotty, of course, is the young hip hopper who's uh, been doing a bang up job for us. By the way, from what I understand, he jumped in for you this week and helped you out with the RBIs. Yes, he did. Yeah, it was yeah. fucking great. He loves it. How was, and be totally honest here, how was Dave in Pepper's seat last week? Well, even though Dave is my mentor and uh, he's the guy who's going to be grading me on my performance, I got to say, uh, it was pretty rough last week. <laughs> what was he doing? <laughs> um, oh, I'm going to grade you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, my review's coming up next week, just as a reminder. But uh, it, was, it wasn't what Dave was doing. It was more what he wasn't doing because it's going to be a shorter list. But, you know, in terms of getting the replays done, making sure that uh, we have all of the type of material that we needed for the show, Dave was, you know, running around. He's got the board and he's got, you know, to be on air. So in terms of Chris being out, I was stepping up to be your uh, other two producers. Was he was he screaming? Um, in terms of screaming, it was more screaming than not. Then uh, <laughs> it, was, it was more screaming than he was talking in terms of, what are you this fucking done now? Scott, get this done now! <laughs> this might sound crazy to you, but I love that. <laughs> yeah, I, I was running. I love that. Commandant McDonald was uh, taking care of business back in the booth. I was definitely a lot angrier, probably, than Pepper. Yeah, Chris kind of runs his shit. And uh, the first day that I came in, Dave was out, obviously, with his son being sick. So I had Chris kind of take me under his wing, taught me everything in a week. And the day, I'm gonna point this out though to Chris and Dave. I'm uh, leaving here the other day. I see young Scotty walking past. Fuck! I was hoping you didn't notice that one. Uh, the front desk, and um, I see him say to the receptionist, "Have a great day, Miss Softy," and then she says to him, "And you have a great day, Captain Scotty." <laughs> <laughs> Miss what the Softy? fuck? I what really, is that? I really cut that interaction short. Thank God this place is made of completely glass <laughs> because I could see Ron coming in front of the fishbowl. I take a quick left and I'm like, I'm going to say bye to you and be polite and do our usual banter. But this is a quick interaction. I'm running on the so elevator. You, are, you, are you hitting on her or just, uh, you um, like just we talk to ladies? I like to make sure that I keep my options open. I like to you know plant my seed everywhere and if something grows out of it. Not every single plant is going to grow. So you got to just plant them everywhere and hope that you can get a couple that hit. That might be the grossest thing I've ever heard a young man say. <laughs> That's a lot come. <laughs> Scotty too hotty. No, he's love... Captain Scotty. It's Captain Scotty. He's Scottie. Captain Scotty. Captain, Captain Scotty. No, is it her idea to call you Captain? Yeah, because um, she keeps on saying that I'm too young for her. So it eventually became Kid, and then it became Captain. And nicknames just abound in this place. I think I'm Scotty the Body, Scotty too hotty, Scotty. How much Captain younger Scottie. are you than her? Uh, four years. So, in terms of how you look at it, I got to see what my value proposition is for her. Now, in terms of money, I can't do that. In terms of a job, I can't do that. Um, in terms of supporting her, I can't do that. But I can bang it out because I am younger. So, I'll go with Captain Scotty the Kid, and I'll see if that value proposition will work on her. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And I'll just play it to wherever I can anyway. Hmm. Again, folks, I know you have wives, you have sisters, you have girlfriends. This is what guys who are nice to women are really think. <laughs> I'm, I'm a real sweetheart, out. aren't I? <laughs> they, uh, you know, that every day she's she thinks that this guy is just stopping by because he wants to be friends. Mm -hmm. And you heard what he said. I'm charming. I'm throwing some seeds out there because I might want to fuck this bush <laughs> later on. Well, Bang she is out. an African American lady. For those that are listening. We didn't point that one out. So, you know, you can't discriminate. It's 2009. You well, gotta... you can't discriminate because you're African-American. <laughs> uh, you know what? She doesn't know that. I'm keeping that one in the back pocket because when, you know, Why? it's the moment of truth and the pants come down and it's a pleasant surprise, there you go, locked down. So you got to keep oh. that one in your back pocket. Jesus Christ. Now, by the way, the whole thing of uh, I don't discriminate by bringing it up on the air. By the way, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> She's a black young lady. <laughs> that seems to me, Fuzz, mm -hmm. uh, some type of I see people differently. Right. He felt the ne he felt there was enough of a difference that it needed to be mentioned. I I, I met your mom not too long ago, right? Yes. Who were the rest of the people with your mom? Um, that was my little brother Ian. Okay. Another another mutt child, mm -hmm. and um, my f friend Tarangi Modi, an uh -huh. Indian girl. 
And who, by uh, the way, is gorgeous? Gorge. Oh, I have. That's the one thing I can bring. If you need good-looking girls, I can bring them to the show. And then, of course, my ex Aggie, who we met. One of them on is uh, would be the receptionist, though. That you would be bringing to the show. <laughs> Miss Softy. Correct. I'll bring her back. Be like, oh, your ship's over? Hey, listen. I want some ice <laughs> Come on cream. by. I can get you some tickets. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Um, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Here's Sean in Pittsburgh. Rotanimo Bay. Hey, uh, Scotty Tuati. In terms of verbal crutches, where would you say you stand? Um, I have noticed that I say it's funny a lot. That's big, basically my biggest verbal crutch, and I don't know what, I've, what else I've said during this. Uh, he, he put it in there. You totally missed it. Yeah, you totally missed it. In terms of. You, you have a tendency to say in terms Damn. of. Damn. <laughs> in terms of what's going on here. <laughs> it makes what I'm saying sound a lot more intelligent. I don't know. I just tune you out. I hope. The second <laughs> you start to fucking be jive. That 1970s jive thing. You're almost a lounge singer in your personality. <laughs> Uh, Dave, you grade him on what level? Is it just a pass fail or A to F? Um, it's a pass fail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I didn't know about this liaison with Miss Softy. Well, let me just say this: if I ever find out you fail an intern, you're fired. <laughs> that for that second. I don't care if the guy comes in here and lights the joint on fire. I'm a very strict grader. We're just gonna have to see how Scotty ends the semester. Dave has said that my communication skills need work, and that's not a good sign. Uh, on radio. What is it that what, that you meant by that, Dave? Um, no, uh, a few times we were assigning Scotty um, little things. Um, I don't recall. It was just he didn't hear the whole... He, he didn't hear the entire... Because uh, he's moving on, he's doing the next thing? Well, listen, this is a good thing about Scotty. He's definitely a mover and a shaker. And he has technology down uh, very, very well. But I think sometimes he's concentrating on the next job rather than continuing the, the job he's doing, and so a couple details might be skipped. Well, there's seed to spread. Exactly. Keep open new tabs. You're not going to stay on the same page for long. you got to have, like, five tabs open at a time. Because you got to keep looking for those ladies, huh? You're nice to all of them? You have to be. Are you even... nice to the ones even though you don't want to have sex with them? Yeah, or... you, can't, you can't discriminate on that level. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to make sure that everybody knows, hey, you're a nice guy. You got to keep that facade up. You have but to keep are that you a nice up. guy? Yeah. Or is it a facade? I mean, you don't, a person who is genuine doesn't need to put a facade up. If you were actually a nice guy, you wouldn't need everybody to think, hey, accept him as a nice guy. I have, I have told the, uh, just because we're bringing up this, this, this person before, I would jump in the pants if you let me. So it's not like there's what anything... What person, Miss Softy? Yeah, Miss Softy. So I've... you actually said to her as a nice guy She's that you are... She's an HR, are. too, which is pretty rough to but, say but, around here, but... But you're saying you think it's something a nice guy would say would be, I would jump in the pants if you let, let me. me. Up, up front and honest, I'll put on the shtick you want me to. I can try mm -hmm. to read it to say, what do you want? I'll transform myself into that. But in terms of... What I'm trying to push, I'll put it out there. Put it, it on the sounds, table. Take it, a look at it. It sounds like you've done the nice guy shtick so much that you've convinced yourself, too. Yeah, because I'm still genuine. I'm still who I am. But I'm not going to let that get in the way of my objective. It's ends to the means. Uh, bad news here. If you go to 202 Friends, there is an RT on Fez's Silence of the Lambs dance. We cannot seem to get that off the front page, Fez. That was only, as hard as we're trying. Yeah, that was only supposed to be up there for 24 hours when it happened. And that was months uh, ago now. Has, has Captain Scotty hit on you? <laughs> no, Captain Scotty has not hit on Mrs. Softy, I guess. No. You're I've Mr. Softy. That's Mrs. only because you can't get an erection. <laughs> and and I you haven't have no... yet. Not in front of another human. No. I hope Fez and you're made of ice. Does that make you nervous, though? Oh, very much, yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't want to just sit there, you know, if because I'm with if, somebody. If a guy who's pee shy, can that person then hold an erection? And you've never been tested. No, that's a big fear of mine. Mm. That there's just going to be no reaction. Not that there wouldn't be any reaction. The yeah. reaction would be fear and retreat. Mm. That's sad. Opposite erection. I didn't even know there was such a thing. Shrinkage. Turtling. I don't know. <laughs> retraction. He may be hitting me on me now. I'm not sure. I think retraction is the opposite of No, that would be just compensation. I'm not going to. I don't know if I ever uh, believe in nice guys. 
Dave, you said you've played the nice guy act many, many times. Yes. Uh, and we know a couple of girls. I don't want to say that you tried to re rape, but right. girls who thought they were your friends, you attempted to force yourself on. Them. Yeah, that happened probably. Um, no, it didn't probably. You've that, even, that was under you the gave guise. me the list. Yeah, that was under the guise of me being a nice person. Uh, now, that's why I, am, I would rather, in the women in your life, you'd have a Chris Stanley around who never... Sells himself as a nice person, and yet to me, he's the most genuine of the bunch. Love liquor, damn drugs. You like drugs and liquor, women, and punk and, rock music, right? There, but every but you're not going to pretend that he's somebody. He doesn't have the facade that you have, Scotty. Here's the difference: is that I think that forward. And nice guy seems to be oxymoronic at this point. You can't push yourself, put yourself out there, and also be considered a nice guy. Chris will take a more passive approach, which thus makes him more trusted. Dave takes a more forward approach, whether what he does or not is positive can, or not. Can I tell you this? Mm -hmm. You remind me of an insurance salesman. You pitch all the time. There's that, nothing genuine about you. There's a constant sales aspect. I'm pushing my agenda. But that doesn't make me not a nice person. That just means that I have an opinion and I'm going to make it heard. Well, Chris, will you don't be, see it as as a phony salesman. I, it comes across. It can come across that way as you know. I constantly have a shtick. I constantly am trying to schmooze you. Schnickers, sh shtick and schmooze. He's got. He's got to be like fucking Catskills comic <laughs> with the shit that he holds. He's too. Young Fezzy <laughs> to have schmooze and shtick and a bagel and a schmear. He's too young and black for this. He's coming off as a schmuck. I am. Yes. Schmada. Hey. Hey. What? I, I'm, I'm not sure I know what that means. Uh, Mike in Alabama, you're on a Fez. Hey there, Ronnie B. Yeah. First, first off, if I can say that Chris Stanley, he is the epitome of a saint. Oh, he is. He, I he love the kid. Hey, Ronnie B., I got a spy report for you. All right, then let me do this. Uh, spy report. And I'm setting off this alarm. Spy report. Yeah. Hey, uh, Ronnie B., the uh, transit workers, as you know, in the great city of Philadelphia are on strike. They only have one train running today. Now that train's on fire. Here's a good thing. Normally they'd have 200 trains on fire on any <laughs> given day. Uh, today, uh, just one. It does seem like these guys are striking just so they can watch the game late and sleep <laughs> in. What time does the game start tonight? Uh, 8 o'clock. But, you know, first pitch won't be until 8.15, 8 Fox, they just keep pushing it back. Uh, who's doing uh, National Anthem? Tonight for the Yankees? I'm not exactly sure about that. Um, I know it's one of the hip-hop girls. I can't think of which one They've already is. used Alicia Keys and Jay-Z, so... Yeah, uh, not, uh, it's, we're going to go back a few years. Yeah. Mary J. Blige. Mary J. Oh, Mary J. Blige, uh, I think, invented, which has been uh, even picked up by country artists now. I think she was first to start throwing the pussy. Like, lead with the pussy. Yeah, I know it's that dance. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna get up in here. <laughs> and she goes all out. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of what the Philly Fanatic does, though. <laughs> um, Wrong lips. Same body type, though. Fez Watley, let's suppose you were a young lady. Okay. Let's suppose you were... I'm going to give you something crazy here, and I want you to use all your acting skills. Uh, let's suppose you were interested in men. All right. Would, the, would a person with Scotty's attitude be a turn-off or a turn-on? I think it would be a turn off. I think you would really. Yeah, I think you would feel you're being hustled by him. Well, you are being hustled by him. He even says there's sales of, uh, of with everything. Yeah, but let me ask Dave this: You've lost girls before to guys like Scotty, right? Yes. Is that one of the reasons why you have no respect for women? Uh, that that yeah, you're, it's true. I I find women to be. As shallow, if not more so, than men. Because Interesting. they claim that it's all about, quote-unquote, personality with the guy. Mm -hmm. But in fact, it turns out they are even more superficial once Scotty Tuhati gives his rap on them and they fucking uh, start doing the seed dance or whatever Scotty calls it. The, um, the Wouldn't you fact label it as honesty, though? Couldn't you see it as that of just, this is what I want to do. 
This is what I'm pushing on you. If you want a taste, take a taste. If you don't, move on. It just makes the entire interaction a lot shorter. But you said earlier that you're just going to be who that per- who you think that person wants you to be. And you also said that you're out there playing planting seeds um, and not being up front saying, you know, I'm here j- only to have sex with you. I mean, if a woman said, if you said to a woman, yeah, I only want to have sex with you, and she said, okay, then that would be her choice. That's where she's coming from. I think the more, but you're you're willing to be somebody at least for a little while that she wants you to be. Correct. See if it works out. I'm not having three different chicks at once. It's I'm just selling myself, putting pamphlets out there, putting mailers out there Uh to everybody, and whoever buys now that's off the market. I'm just kind of spreading it around. But even when it's off the market, you're still keeping the pamphlets out there. That's Aggie when she came mentioned that that I'm constantly Mm -hmm. flirtatious and I'm constantly just trying to keep the game up. Just that she knows she can't leave because there's something of some value in me as well to say, hey, listen, if you want to dance off and go and dance with that guy at the club, that's fine. But just know that I can get my shit done on my side as well. It's a checks and balances system. It's I, I feel if you bring it down, it's it's honesty at its I core. I can't believe you're not interning in the sales department. <laughs> I think you could take over the world in sales <laughs> because the fact is, here's what I love about the kid. He's taking something superficial and putting it in his faith there. You know what I mean? Like he's saying, I have absolute 100 uh, belief, trust, and faith in bullshit. He's embraced bullshit as if it was real. It's like Don Draper. Uh, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Here's uh, Matty in D.C. What do you got, Matty? What's going on, Ronnie B.? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm in sales, so I know about bullshit and all that kind of stuff. I'm a pharmaceutical salesperson, but this guy sounds like such a douchebag. I feel like he sounds like the same dude who wrote that book that uh, O&A hates so much. That guy, uh, I hope they serve beer in hell. Like, he thinks he's just got, like, such as, like, um, elitist, like, grip on the whole dating scene. Passing out flyers and pamphlets? A That's a asshole. metaphor, sir, just to let you know. <laughs> There's these things where people say things, and they don't actually do it. It was just trying to put an image out there, because we only have one medium. That's audio. So I'm trying to get it so that you can have a visual cue in your mind on what I'm talking about. But Ladies, what I mean... Come, come to ScottyCon <laughs> 2009. I got Photoshop working. Um, what if this guy was dating your niece, your little sister? How would you feel? Oh, God. I mean, would you feel the need... My, they, they my daughter. Oh, yeah. You're... What if a guy uh, like this comes around when your daughter gets uh, a little older, like three, four years older? Um, I would not allow her to leave my site with Scotty. No offense. But I, I feel like Scotty will be macking many chicks, having sexual intercourse with many women at the same time. All right, but let me ask you this. Quality women or airheads, doofuses? Uh, Sky will be n- n- uh, banging many airheads at the same time. Okay. Four or five. Um, which is one way to live, live your life. That's it definitely fine, is. But I want my daughter being a part of that, those airheads. Your daughter's going to be an airhead. No, she's not. Uh, Jason in Oregon, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, yeah, I just wanted to tell Scotty he's dead on. That's the same shit I do with my chick. Now, you're all happy about that as if this makes it right. We, no, Scotty, there's nothing new about your act, so we're not, you're not coming here and baffling us. No, I'm not this. being a prophet, but yeah. it's the entire system of. Hey, what are you into? You like blogging? I like blogging, too. We should get a blog together. And you have to go through three weeks mm-hmm. of pushing your bullshit agenda right. as opposed to getting down to the nitty-gritty. There's something that is naturally, biologically making me interested in you, and I want to see if you're interested reciprocally. So let's but make it happen. But at the same time, I almost hear, hear um, almost a, a dislike for women. Underneath of it all. The fact that getting to know a, another human being is bullshit when all you really want to do is fuck her. That's the part of it that I would only say to you, is there any truth there? The uh, first caller that was hammering me, I have to say, there is a point to his story, which is I do have an ego. And I feel I'm at a certain level in terms of ranking, in terms of the, where all humans are. What, why is that? Why, you, I, why are you higher if, than if most people? If I'm an eight, mm-hmm. I don't want to go down to a seven. So I'm going to set my standard. And if you meet that standard in terms of education, looks, personality, add all of them up like the Sims or something. Right. If you reach that um, bar, then I'm going to be interested in you and I'm going to put a flag on you. I feel like 
I'm where I'm watching the fucking American Psycho film. <laughs> I feel like that you are. Uh, what's the name of that fucking film that I'm talking about? Is that it? Is it American, American Psycho? Psycho? Yeah, yeah. I just feel like he's going to take out a business card right now <laughs> and admire it. <laughs> I feel like he's going to care about that. Everything about you of seeing yourself as an eight, um, making sure that you were with a woman who was a reflection of you, it all comes across incredibly superficial, but at the same time, you're not even saying that's superficial. You're seeing it as what life is about. Because life is superficial. Let's dig past the bullshit. And I know that there are some people that empathize with my state of being, which is meeting somebody. Those of you that aren't married, those of you that aren't in a monogamous relationship, maybe, that are stretching around, hopefully see my perspective on the whole thing of the bar thing. Even Match.com, it's all bullshit in terms of what are you interested in? I like long bike rides. If you both are into long bike rides, how often do you do long fucking bike rides? That's maybe 1% of your existence. Uh, let's get past it. Let's, uh, here's DD in Kansas. Oh, shit. Let me put down my buglers. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, uh, Scotty sounds like a washed-up generic version of Franklin. All right, there is a oh, certain... Mike went out. Sorry. That's when you would fill time. Yeah, it's um. Well, I would agree with Frank with the Franklin thing, cause I, but I think Franklin does it with guys and girls. Um, do you are you somewhat crushed that someone would compare you with Franklin? Uh, sort of, cause I don't. I've I've seen Franklin, haven't had the chance to meet him. You think he's disgusting? Not on the level, I would say. In terms, you not to have a giant you ego. see yourself as terribly more attractive than Franklin. Not that it matters. Mm -hmm. I'm talking holistically personality everything about you is more powerful than franklin if you want to rank it i'm yeah. all about taking the human species and saying you're a one i'm sorry this is what you can do you're an eight this is what you have opportunities open for you so you know everybody can be ranked dave can be ranked he'd be somewhere in there uh in the number and then you know ron fez they'd all be ranked and whoever comes out on top should be in those positions so uh you're saying this is like a survival of the fittest i am a complete darwinist uh -huh. i don't believe in social programs i don't believe in helping those out that are less fortunate if you're right. born into it rise up or fall apart those who are dumb are meant to die uh, have you read any iron ran it seems like you'd yes. be a big fan of it yeah, i'm a huge fan of that thank you i'm Nice um, you, no, you just did me a favor in my personal life. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Um, here's Tim. Tim in Rhode Island. You're on Run of Fez. Yeah, well, I have to completely agree with what Scott is doing. I mean, I'm in a very happy relationship, but as far as the dating scene, it's complete bullshit. As far as if my daughter was to be that big of a stupid slut to fall for filthy lines, then you know what? Fuck her. Go get banged in the ass. Uh, as far as like the you're, gonna be, you're gonna be a great dad you're seriously yeah, you gonna know, be one of the greatest dads ever i completely agree it's, it's darwinism if my daughter if i don't train her right mm -hmm. and she falls for a shtick sorry to use that again mm -hmm. then sucks for you you but learn you, you see yourself as doing a shtick you don't see yourself as being genuine i've got multiple weapons hopefully somebody doesn't just sit there and use one thing all the time. You got to have more than one bullet in your gun. So I'll use multiple angles to attack if I think that I really want something. But here's the thing: what would it be about liking a person that would cause you to attack? You're using warfare I'm using analogy. Warfare analogy because it's a battle. It's a battle to. They put up fronts. There's walls. There's defenses. They have their girls. They have reinforcements. The whole thing is trying to work your way around and trying to, to get flank. your dick. Get your dick into something. If that's what your objective is. It I'm can a, I'm also be a long you, you... and meaningful relationship because that girl isn't who she is. The girl that you meet at the club is completely different than the girl you're gonna, that you're going to have next to you watching the Yankees Phillies tonight. You're, if you can get your way to be on her couch and chilling with her, she's not the same way that she is in the dating scene. Uh, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Here's Ryan in Wisconsin. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Hey, Scotty, to Audi. I might not be an eight, but I could sure still kick your ass with your ego. Uh, what do you say to stuff like that? 
Scotty. He can. He doesn't know what I look like. He doesn't know if he can try. I could be six foot five, over two hundred pounds. I could be four feet tall. He's just going there because he's obviously had some bad experience where he had a girl stolen from him from some from someone that had a better game than him, and he's a little bitter about it. It's all about the game. It's all about the game. Are you saying don't hate the play, I hate the game? Is that what you're doing? I'm avoiding that one as, <laughs> as much as I can. But, but you're living it. You're <laughs> living this fucking thing. Like when you're saying it's all bullshit, at the same time, you are living your life by em- embracing and covering yourself in bullshit. Because I'm young enough that I can get in the bullshit. I can mm-hmm. get in there, roll around, and I have the energy to do it all day. If you get up there, I completely understand the alternate perspective. When you get up there, you're tired. You might want to do the bullshit, you know, between 4 and 8 p.m. on a Friday and Saturday. Then when you get even older, you just want to settle down and you'll settle for something. But right now, I'm young and I'm going to keep on fighting 24 hours a day. Fighting for what? I don't fighting understand. Fighting for finding somebody while there's still something to find. You uh-huh. know, sex in the city isn't real. I'm not going to, I'm deathly afraid that I'm not going to find a girl over 30. They're not around. Everybody's taken by then. So I'm fighting as hard as I can while they're still big enough of a pool that I can find somebody that matches me. Uh, here is David in Michigan. You're on Fez. Hey, Ronnie. Uh, you know what? I, I feel kind of bad for this guy because his ego and his uh, inability to, to see beyond his own uh, hubris is going to leave him about 10, 15 years from now, fat, balding, and alone in a you know small apartment, drinking himself into oblivion. But you're saying no way, not going to happen. You're going to be all success. I'm trying my best, and you have to think of all success, and I don't want to be in that point. I'm deathly afraid of that. Your biggest fear is to end up like Franklin. When you see a Franklin, you're afraid to end up that way. To, to, to be past my prime. Right mm-hmm. now I'm in it. you got to make the most of it. Uh, Mark, you're on a Fez. I really enjoy Scotty's shtick, and I mean, the only complaint I have about it is I prefer it in its original German. I mean, in the 40s... Uh, when you look back on that regime, you seem to have quite a bit in common with them, at least from a... Uh, size eye color? Well, but also that they're on the Darwinism type of thing. And it's... The Aryan race may not be what mm-hmm. we're looking for, but... The best of the best in our positions. You had the election last night. Did we elect the best people in the positions we want? Right now, New Jersey, my beloved state, has Chris Christie or John Corzine was our options. Mm -hmm. In our densely, most densely populated state in the union, was that the best position? That's what you know. It should have been you. You you should have been out there because you're on your fucking way. You're the young cat. You're if, making things happen. If I can You're push attacking it. what I'm doing now and yeah. keep on pushing, maybe I'll break through that wall. Yeah. Is that where do you see yourself? Five years, ten years? No fucking clue. None I'm, at all. I'm a film student right now on the radio. If you'd asked me this last year where I was, I was you know servicing BMWs. I've I have no I, I, idea where I'm going to be. It's constantly shifting. I just don't want to end up in a situation maybe where I'm a producer. You know, for ten years and not doing anything, like I some mean, fucking lunatic, like these guys. Well, like you know, Eric Nagel. You know, I don't want to be in that situation. <laughs> what is well, it? <laughs> what, <laughs> now, I, now tell me why uh, Iraq on oh, no, O is the that that would be your fear to be him. What that caller two callers ago just mentioned, being mm. sitting there drinking alone, miserable by yourself on a Friday afternoon. You got to be excited, and the last person to leave here is Eric, and he's by himself in a dark O and A staff room, listening to audio that's already happened. It's just a depressing state, and I see that, and I see that as everything I don't want to be in my life. D- that's that's, a, that's actually a fear for you. That I see Eric, I see the gut. I see the breasts, I see the the hat, I see the compensation for something that he's not, and it's just I, It's very <sighs> interesting that, that you've come here and that you've found people to... Uh, almost what motivates you is what not to be. You're petrified to end up like E-Rock, you're petrified to end up like a Franklin. That's why I'm running so fast. I'm mm-hmm. running so that I, I can keep on getting traction, so that I can get away from mediocrity speaking of mediocrity here's uh, one of your biggest fears it's franklin on the phone right now hey franklin hey i wanted to talk to what the number one dog is that he's saying mr alpha dog over here scott alpha dog there we go alpha dog dogs it what's up sometimes, dogs it? sometimes chihuahuas in small cages tend to feel like the big dog you see scotty you're you're i can understand the uh comparisons to me 
but you're on a very superficial level. And Did this surprise you, Franklin, when you heard him talking this way today? Uh, yeah, because I uh, spoke to him this weekend, so I kind of know where he was coming from. But uh, I, I, can't, I can't say that I'm buying this. And here's the thing. Women aren't stupid. If you think that uh, we're the same because I seem to be around a lot of women or whatever, women are intelligent beings the same way men are. And if you think they're dumb, you're going to come off as someone who thinks I never said anything disparaging against no, women. No, you didn't, but you do have them as your target or your prey. And the difference between you and I is the fact that women are my friends. And they'll remain your friends. Therein lies the problem. No, you're never going to break sir. through. <laughs> Yeah, the problem is you thinking that a woman you can sleep with is not a friend. You can sleep with women who you can be friendly with. Yeah, you're missing a whole gigantic part of life. You're missing amazing parts about women. Which is? That they're more than the vagina. What, it wasn't, what isn't he getting from the Ayn Rand philosophy that you seem to like? Thanks a lot for calling, Franklin. No problem, Cat. Uh, he just said Cat. Uh, what is Franklin missing? It's, what is he missing from that Superman philosophy? He is the the best friend who cries on the sh who who the girl oh. can cry on their shoulder when I fuck up, and right. then he gets the let me hug you, moves into copping a feel, and hopefully she's either sobbing or drunk enough that something happens. The issue with that philosophy is it involves a waiting game, and I'm not going to sit You're not gonna here do it. and wait. You got you have to. Keep on firing. It doesn't matter if you miss. Who cares about your ego? Dust yourself off, get back up, and fire again. You know, you have to keep on pushing and, and don't settle for something that's beneath you. And it's not about vagina, as Franklin said. It's about pushing yourself to find a compatible mate. And mate is not necessarily just mating. It's also about getting something that's your intellectual stimulation, your emotional stimulation, and, of course, your sexual stimulation. Here's Wayne in Virginia. Wayne. Uh, with yeah, our intern, Scotty Tuhati. Hey, hey, guys. Uh, listen, I agree 100% with what Scott's uh, saying. you, you got to cut through the bullshit. Time is too short. We are a superficial society, and if you've got a target on them, they've got a target on you. They're out to do the same thing that you're looking to do. And he's being honest about it. And they got nice guys that are sitting back saying that he's got an ego. They're the guys are the twos or threes, and they're fucking losing all the time. Thank you very much. Here's Matt in Buffalo. Matt, you're on running Fez. Matt, you got us, buddy? It's like he's fucking a phone right now. Uh, Brian in New Mexico. Hey, uh, I just tuned in, but this guy's responses all sound canned. Like, uh, it all seems rehearsed and parroted and not at all original. Well, uh, there is plenty about him that is, well, I called him a salesman, and he is. But he's also, in my opinion, a salesman that will find success in the American system. I really think that as if he keeps handling himself the way he does... Uh, and attack something where that kind of thing pays off. He's got everything to make it in America. I'm, I'm, I, it's a compliment that he thinks this is pre-written, but this is seriously just called in, to ask for my perspective, and I can push. I'm pushing it out there. I just try to and make I, this I, an intellectual conversation as opposed to the base human function that it is. I, I think this is the kind of stuff that rolls around in your brain all the time. I think you kind of have a tape playing in your head about getting ahead and doing things and becoming successful while you're sitting there. And if you if you have ADHD like I do, you compensate as opposed to sitting there and waiting for something to happen. You have a second gear working in the back of your head to say, OK, life goals, uh, objectives. What do you want to push? What are you trying to get today? If there's a girl sitting across from me in the subway, what's my in? Here's what's interesting to me. Fez, you haven't said much over this uh, time that Scotty's been in. If you could have your talent and then your belief system. Versus what would be his talent and his belief system, right? Which would you choose? I would definitely choose his confidence. But you get to choose between the two. You got to take both packages. Um, I'll take mine. Because? Because I just don't see where there's anything real about his. He's happy. The big difference between him and you mm -hmm. is that he's happy with the choices that he's making. Where you're sad all the time. Dave, which one would you choose? Scotties or Fezzes? Yeah. 
Um, you get both. I choose uh, Scotty's. Over Fez and his, his Fez's talent. Um, while they're awesome, the um, amount of inner anguish that Fez sometimes seems to go through doesn't seem as pleasant as what Scotty's going through. Interesting. Uh, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Um, I would all, I'd always uh, pick fucking talent over everything, over anything else. But it's interesting to see which one's having a better time in life and which one isn't. I mean, it kind of goes to show you that talent doesn't exactly bring confidence, nor does it bring satisfaction. Uh, here's our good friend, Newsday Laura. Hi, Bobby. Hey. Um, I, I'm just a little confused. Scotty, I'm not trying to bag on you or nothing. But, like, what? can you summarize in, like, two sentences what you mean? Because... You just said you have ADHD, and you're, like, all over the place. You're talking about Darwinism. Here's the main thing. How long would it take you to fuck Laura if you decide to put your mind to it? That probably wouldn't happen. No, I'm going to let Scotty answer. <laughs> if I was to say that Laura was on my level if when I was to meet her mm -hmm. and have a, ex, you know extended conversation with her, I could probably make it happen within two weeks in terms of getting a relationship going. Fucking or not, it could be some type of relationship. Because I don't fuck everybody. Mm -hmm. Let's not get that confused. But the, in terms of having a meaningful relationship, I could get it. You're not going to gonna be with people that aren't on uh, at least a date. You still, you still keep on talking to girls or even networking with guys, if that's what you're into. Oh. Um, you. <laughs> but even if they're not necessarily some that you'd be considered going out with you have to keep on practicing it's a skill it's a trade in terms of if you want to call it womanizing it's it's something that you have to say what are they into do you have to find out what the characters are in fucking twilight you have to understand what so sex in the city is all about you have to you'll get watch it. sex in the city or twilight just to be able to i didn't converse watch twilight. With women. i did go to uh sex in the city movie and you did that for the full thing of, of being able to talk to women about it no, I went with a girl, but mm -hmm. I said, as opposed to saying, oh, man, this sucks. I could be watching football. Take it and understand it could be a learning experience, just like going to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. But, but the whole point to go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art is also to use that with women, not for your own enjoyment, but to, to make women think of you as somebody who goes to museums, to make uh, women think of you as somebody who watches women's films. I, I, my biggest thing is I would like to be worldly. Because mm -hmm. if you want to be able to speak to somebody like a ranging from a Ron Bennington all the way down to a Eastside Dave, you want to be able to have a discussion in which case you can relate with both I sets see. of people. Now, how do, you, how do you feel like you're relating with me since you started here? Do you feel like we're close? We have a connection? It's a, uh, it's a liaison. Um, mm -hmm. It's a... You are paid to speak on the radio, and mm. when you're not on radio, you've said this before, I get paid to speak. Therefore, when I'm not, it's going to be a short and sweet conversation. So I'm really trying to avoid getting in trouble most of the time Smart. Um, in terms of oversight. But uh, you've spoken up for me in terms of my mom. My mom loves you. You mm. said he's a good kid to my mom, and that gave me brownie points for at least two days before she started shitting on me again. Uh, here's our good friend, Millie Hatchett. Hey, Millie. Hey there. Um... I saw Scotty at an event, and he is very, very good looking. But he ruins it when he opens his mouth. He ruins Seriously. the field. It, he totally ruins it. He, um, you know, one minute he's talking about how you need to be upfront with the girl and make your intentions known so you can move on, and the next minute he talks about the games. So what is it? Are you upfront or are you dealing with little girls? No, I'll, I'll, let, Scott, I'll it's, let Scotty. I'll let Scotty handle this. It's good to have a, a woman's perspective on this one. I would be, if I was to speak to you, I'd say I'm upfront. This is what my objectives are. Now, in terms of what you want me to be, I can alter my game to suit what your purposes for me are. If you want me to be the guy that takes you to the Met, that's cool. You want to go to a Jets game? I'm down with that too. Would you want a woman to do that back to you if you were looking for your perfect, long-lasting relationship? That's would a you great like question. Her, would you like her to be fake with you? Th it's, it's, uh, and, it's not. And, well, at least fake, fake interest in what you like. He's got it. It's, it, can, it can start, you can call it fake interest, but I can, I can call it, be, just give it a chance. For instance, uh, Aggie, the blonde who um, I brought in here, she didn't like football and video games. Now she plays Xbox 360 with me, and she's been to a couple Mets and Jets games with me. It's, I will try what you have, and I will put on a, at least I'm having a good time, front in the beginning. And, and if at, by the end of it, by two or three times, if I don't like it, that's, 
then I'm going to push it on you. But to answer your real question, which was what am I looking for on the other side, I have ridiculously high standards. I want you to play a game with me. That's fine. But I'm also going to say and drop it in three weeks if things aren't working out because Let, you're not at that level. Let's keep moving on. Here's John of Virginia. You're on a fest. Yeah, uh, I, I keep thinking, I mean, I don't know this guy. But he does sound like he just hates himself. I mean, he's constantly running from himself. But he's, he's totally afraid of being alone. And I can't be the only one that thinks this guy is not a closeted homosexual. I mean, come on. Everything he says in between the lines, it's, it's obvious. What, give me an example of an uh, in-between-the-line situation. Uh, you know, it's like the, you're so afraid of being even viewed anything less than, like, hunting for a woman. And it, it, it's obvious to me the way you speak, you don't have a clue about it. It's ridiculous. So, so because my entire objective and I become completely infatuated with finding a mate... That makes me gay. See, finding a mate. There you go. You didn't even say finding a, a girl or anything. Then you, then you're I just talking about am being scientific and bringing it down to the base level of whoever it is, opening it into whether you're interested in a girl or a guy, um, finding it's somebody who stimulates you, you on another <laughs> level. Uh, here's Fred Brooklyn. Fred. Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah. I met Scotty. He's pretty. Uh, he's a pretty boy. Um, at, but what he does right off the back with people is he starts mind-fucking immediately. Whether he's fucking him in person doesn't matter. He starts mind-fucking, and he's feeling right off the bat where he can get with you. And uh, I was there, I understand. But the problem with Scott, and I, and I saw you, Scotty, is uh, if you were in a, a jail situation or a man's man situation, you'd be the first taken under. And, and I believe, I honestly believe, that you've dabbled in the past. So I, I do you think this is a phase? Guy. Yeah, I've saying? been through the institutional system. I have, I have a good gay door. I, I think you have dabbled. You're, you're too pretty. You take damn too good care of yourself. And, and you care way too much uh, about what people no, think. Of Fred, you. this is the worst insult you could ever uh, give a man. It's, well, it, I, I, I didn't say he's uh, a, a full-fledged. He's you just said he dabbled. He's trying to break out of it every way he can. I, I mean, he's trying to prove himself via women and, 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 and this fake confidence, but it's really all inexperience. I've seen a thousand salesmen at his stage who, who just end up content with a city or a state job because uh, they have no patience to wait it out for the good things to come. They move right along. If they don't see what they get immediately, they move along. They don't work to make it better. They're, they're expecting what they want right there on the spot, and, and it just doesn't come like that. Everything takes nourishing in life, and it takes maintenance. And uh, I don't think Scotty has what it takes to do either. Now, I, let, let me move over to Tony. Do you have something you want to say? Oh, well, I'm not offended because th you said that's the worst thing you can say to a guy is that he's dabbled or any type of homosexual comment. Mm -hmm. But let's face the facts. We're on a nationwide radio show, so we're going to have people from all over the country. And I go to NYU in the, in the village with film students. Right. There's going to be people around me. I have to step up and become metrosexual at the at bare minimum just to get my sense of style up there so that I can run with that pack if I want to So if you with need NYU to flirt girls. with a man, you will. No, if I need to I have I have tons of gay friends. My best friend uh, is gay and mm -hmm. they have their uses as well not in terms of what what yeah, maybe your eyebrows planning. are going up for. You know, party planning. Or doing your dishes. Getting into clubs. A lot of bouncers in, in New York City are gay, and they can get you in with absolutely zero cover and get you a table. So if you've got to uh, play up to a man the same way you would to play up to a woman to get what you want, you'd be willing to do it. And I don't mean sexually, but if a little flirtation, a little extra attention, if that works for you, you'd be willing to do it. I'd push it as far as necessary not to... Um, put my morals at stake. I see. Uh, Fez, you ever think this happened to you before? Um, no, I don't think so. Maybe if you think back over what crushed you so much, you would be looking at Scotty Too Hotty. Mm. You get that at all? Now that you mention it? You wouldn't have if I mentioned it? I don't think so. You see where I'm coming from there? Yes, I do. I know exactly what you're saying. There are certain assistant types who will play up to people. And then that person takes that perhaps the wrong way. And then six years later, here we're all sitting. <laughs> we're trying to fucking put Humpty Dumpty back together again. I bring this up to you, Fez, to, to just point out to you what the harm in that kind of behavior. The whole harm of, uh, I'm going to do, if that person needs to feel a little better, about the blah, 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 you can end up fucking crushing people in this world. 
where one person only has one intention and the other person not at all. Um, here is uh, Tony. Tony, you're on Ronnie Fuzz. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. I'm in, I'm in sales, and this guy makes my fucking skin crawl. Um, well, that's because you're looking at a young version of yourself. <laughs> he sounds like a great salesman, too. Yeah. Uh, here's Adam. Adam, you're on Fez. Yeah, I agree with you, Ronnie. I mean, Scotty is a perfect salesman who just really knows how to use identity management for his benefit. Um, I, I think that the system that we have set up in this country now, Scotty's going to do very, very well in that system. It's that whole kind of uh, power of positive thinking thing. I mean, Bush has gone out and selling this kind of stuff. Tony Robbins has made millions of dollars uh, saying just the kind of stuff that this kid's saying right now. And it's not, it's, it's, it's all about perspective. It's not whether you look at something as a failure, you look at it as a learning experience. You can, you can gloss over anything to make it something to be usable in the future. If you strike out, you strike out. That's fine. But what did you take out of it? Um, really? Is that the way that... So no matter what, you want to take something out of it? No matter what. If, if, I'm, if I'm striking out, I'm still going to... With a, with a girl at a club, let's say. If I'm striking out, I'm still going to find out what she doesn't like about me so that I can adjust that in future when I can find a similar archetype for that female. Uh, Sean, Sean, you're on a fez. Hey, Scotty, I, I, I've been exactly where you are right now before. You're, you're missing some important things. One is what you're talking about, Franklin, being the friend, is you have to also be able to be that friend and shoulder to cry on for the person you want to be with. Mm -hmm. And if you keep building up these false images of yourself to the women and you keep changing but what... Well, here, here, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I think that you're saying that maybe you're not always genuine, but neither is a guy like Franklin. It, I think it, that it, was your beef with Franklin. My beef is that you can call me a scumbag, but I'm the one that has my objective up front. Right. As opposed to, yeah, I'm going to be your friend. Meanwhile, he said it. I'm going to be your friend. And you know what? You can get love out of those situations. And he was talking about fucking. A and you can't just say, I'm going to be your friend. But I'm waiting for a situation, as opposed to coming up and saying, I'm going to make a situation happen. Mm. And as far as me being the friend, I can't. At least I know my shortcomings and say, I have zero wisdom. I'm too young to know anything. So it, on, on the other side of the page, you can have somebody like, you know, an Eric Nagel who has a ton of skills on what he has, but has absolutely zero personality in terms of able to deliver it. Why is it that everybody from o a show, what is it about E-Rock it, it seems like you're afraid to end up like him, like this is your biggest fear. To be a, a, a just... It's, but I mean, he's got a, a, a great job, he's got a great chick, he's got his own place, he takes care of himself in life. There, there's not a scale that we have in America that E-Rock is a failure. Now, if you're going to compare him with ONA, obviously ONA have, you know, done better financially or whatever. But where's his momentum? Where's he moving? He's stuck, and that's not just because of his size. He's he's stuck in where he's at. He's not going anywhere. He's not branching out. You've got Sam and Dave moving on, trying to make their own show. Mm -hmm. But Eric is is comfortable with being a board op for a secondary show it's it's something what do you mean a secondary show it's a it's a spin-off it's you know you're it oh you mean your for spin -off. special for, delivery oh special delivery he worked with us on saturday night actually he was just uh, i out. thought for a second that you were calling o yeah. a secondary show <laughs> he, he would have led the real big fun he helped us out he did a great job uh, so that hurts your feelings a little bit. Uh, it, it's it, yeah. Well, secondary. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, listen, it, he definitely sees Sky sees himself as bigger than than a lot of people around here. Apparently, uh, here is our good friend Death Metal Mel. Mel, gentlemen, nine one seven zero checking in today. Yeah, buddy. Hoo -ha! Thank you, sir. Good to hear you as always. Um, I do admire Scotty's, uh, you know, um, conviction and drive, but. To me, it just sounds like you kind of sound like an empty mantra, kind of like religion, kind of like you said, the Tony Robbins is, and, you know, everything kind of just happens by chance a lot in life. Uh, you can drive certain things, but I just think it sounds like the kind of bullshit that if it... If it but but at the same time, Mo, I know enough about corporate America 
that there is very few corporations that wouldn't be happy with a guy like him walking through the door talking at an interview. And Mo, he, does that mean you don't try? If you, I know it's all chance, but does that mean you don't try to push it as best you can? No, I, I do admire that part of what you're saying. You have drive and incentive. That's great. It's just... You're saying a lot of buzzwords and <clears throat> phrases that I don't really think add up to much. And when it works for you, you'll you'll point to it and say, "Hey, great!" Kind of like religion. And when it doesn't work for you, you're just sort of left feeling empty. And I'm not shitting on you. I do wish you luck. Um, I do. I also kind of sense that you have some sort of like real like like you feel like there's a deadline that you have to meet. Like something's rushing up on you. I mean, life does move fast. It's just there's like an urgency to what you're saying that kind of worries me too, personally. Um, here is, thanks a lot, Mo. Let's go over to Scott. Scott, you're running Fez. Hey, buddy, it's 287 What do you say, dude? I have a feeling that, uh, Ted Bundy kind of had the same attitude as Scotty Too Hotty. Well, in terms of serial killers, Ted Bundy was successful at what, uh, he did. It so doesn't have to be a noble that. career. It's just... He got the women. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's it doesn't have to be a noble career. Just be good at something, you know. If it happens to be, I'm the best guy at Build a Bear Workshop, then be the best fucking guy at Build a Bear Workshop if that's what pushes you. But let's say in terms of Iraq, maybe he's very happy. He's living a dream to be a producer for O and A. It's something that he always wanted. He got it. He's got a great chick. He lives in man in New York City. He works in New York City. He's having a great time. Why do you look down on that? Because he is not, he's the, he's the shit. He's, he may be on paper. If mm -hmm. you want to look at a resume, that's fine. If you want to look at a, a person, that's not where he's at. He's the lowest guy on the totem pole on that show. Sam shits on him. He's, he's, he's Sam's garbage. Pulled in. He's constantly, well. <laughs> garbage on top of shit. <laughs> you, you can't have a, a point where you're just, oh, I'm feeling bad about myself. Let me bully this Whoa, individual. Oh, yeah, come on in, dude. Look who's here. Oh, it's Eric Nagel. It's E-Rock. How are you, pal? What's up, man? Uh, I suppose you heard some of this. Yeah. Um, Surprised to hear it? Yeah, a little bit, considering I really don't know uh, Scott too well here, uh, other than I, I knew he was an intern here. Uh, I did catch the last end, other than uh, you, you telling me that I'm shit. I'm the lowest end on the totem pole here. I'm actually the second highest under O and A on the totem pole. Mm -hmm. Okay, do I get shit on the air? Yes. Do I take a lot of shit? Yes. But that's also sort of the role that I play for the show. Correct. Now you're also saying, oh, he's sitting in an office and he's uh, working on audio by himself, and that's no life. Maybe that's my job. Correct. You know, sometimes Correct. you need to be the guy behind the people who uh, do everything on the air. So that's what I do. Okay. If you're looking for um, me to disagree with you, you're not going to have that. But it's I'm not, not looking at you to disagree. I'm correcting saying, you perhaps, on your assessment here. All right. What, what you said, and perhaps you missed it because you were walking here, and it like, uh, took you a little bit, was that I was really talking about on paper, mm -hmm. you look great. But I would never have my uh, – Scott, Scotty has only so much value. Who and is Scotty? You? Me. Oh, so I was talking to refer to myself person. in third person. Okay. So if, if I was That's saying I have so much value, mm. so I could not have somebody have any type of slanders or, or mudslinging on my character, which is only worth so much. So if you keep on letting that happen day in and day out, okay. you may say I have a comfortable situation, but when you have callers calling in and you have every single person on your staff taking dumps on you, mm -hmm. it eventually gets to the point where, congratulations, you, you're, you're a very well compensated garbage man because you go home at the end of the day mm -hmm. and you have dog shit on your shoes and your wife says thanks for bringing home the bacon but I have to sweep off the floor every single time you come in okay well, let me point out my, my chick has her own career alright so I'm not bringing home the bacon we both do it kind of equally second of all you're saying oh I'm, I'm fucking garbage man I take shit on the air yes I do but behind the scenes from the, uh, the on air talent from the management here they like what I do they're very happy with the job that I, that I put out for these guys so if there was a big problem that I just sat around taking shit all the time, you think I would still have been here like five, six years later? No. Okay? For, if I was just going to sit here and constantly just be treated like a piece of shit that I don't do anything right, I would have left myself. Okay? But that's not the case. On the air is one thing. Behind the scenes is another. Like Dave. Dave is great on the air. He takes a lot of shit. But behind the scenes, Dave's also fucking brilliant at what he does. Mm. Okay? Mm. So... 
you think Dave's going to take a lot of shit if if these guys are just like Dave? You don't do anything right. They okay? did that for the last half hour though. On the air. But if this was the case for five years, if Dave couldn't do a fucking thing right, you think he'd still be here or want to be there here? There have been no. examples of that. For instance, Than on the Opie and Anthony show had a nice, well-compensated job. He mm -hmm. still left it to give something else a shot because he okay. didn't want to be part of the constant targeting that you guys have. He also wasn't on the air that much. He was a behind-the-scenes guy. And you are a behind-the-scenes guy as well. Mm -hmm. Until you're brought I, I don't understand. Why are you doing an internship in radio? Exactly. And here are the guys that would be the successful guys in radio, and you act like they've thrown their lives away. It's, it's not about throwing a, a, your life away, yeah. life away necessarily. It's about... You ha you, uh, there is a brand, which is the Ron and Fez show. But there's also the brand, which is Eric Nagel. And if you, you have to represent both brands equally in terms of pushing your own agenda as well as the agenda of the greater corporation which you happen to work for. And I feel like Eric would have himself be completely flat because he's been stepped on so much for the greater good of the Opie and Anthony show. And I don't, I'm not sure if that's the healthiest perspective to have. Okay, on the air, because that's the role I have been... Um, accustomed to playing and what they kind of want. Okay, so that's what I do on the air. As far as my brand, my name's not on the fucking wall or on this channel here. Ron and Fez and Opie and Anthony, those are the brands. I work for Opie and Anthony, mm -hmm. so it's not my spot to go, hey, here's where I stand. You're not going to shit on me because I'm. You don't even defend Scotty. yourself. Oh, I do. There's times that I don't, there's times that I do. I pick and choose. Okay? But there's a lot of shit that goes on that you know nothing about. Mm -hmm. Like Ron said, you want to intern in radio. Most of the successful shows have a staff that gets shit on. Ron and Fez, Opie and Anthony, Howard. That's what the business is. You got to take your shots and you give your shots, okay? You're coming in here like you're better than everybody. No, good luck taking a shot at me because uh -huh. you're going to get shot at back. That's really? The thing you want me to get on. Sam in here after you shot on his show saying he was secondary? If, if you want, you can bring as many... You can bring as many people in here as You're you want. You're dealing with fire it's... with that. You really are. You're being a total asshole to everybody here. I'm not being, I'm not being an asshole. It, a secondary show, I was not sitting, shitting on Sam and Dave. I was actually on Sam and Dave on Saturday when you guys were there. Mm -hmm. And it's, I referred to it as a spin-off. So it's two characters, one from the Ron and Fez show, one from the no, Open You said a show. secondary show, then quickly said, oh, it's a spin-off. Then you said, oh, am I going to be satisfied with a career board opping for a secondary show? They asked me to come in and help them out, all right? Mm -hmm. It's not my job to do their show or be a part of their show. They asked me. So I said, sure, I'd help them out. So you're going to shit on me for helping out a secondary show when those two guys are trying to make something because I'm helping them out because I'm not the one on the mic trying to no. make a name for myself? Well, I'm concerned about your stagnation. You have a, a great situation right now, but I just don't see any type of forward momentum. What the which fuck would be do a you know? You don't even know half the opportunities I have coming up. Where are they? If it's you none of your fucking business. If you're going to have something where you're saying, listen, I'm not going to take somebody fucking with my public image you might as well want to defend your public image by Dude, citing examples of saying, listen, I People know my public have... image on this show. Yeah, I'm E-Rock on Opie and Anthony. What does E-Rock do? He does stupid stunts, he gets shit on, and the butt of a lot of jokes, all right? Mm -hmm. But that's the role I do. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't fucking be here. Correct. Okay? If they didn't like it, I wouldn't be here. Correct. Okay? So if you came in to get a job, I don't know, with Ron and Fez, but say with our show, and you're going to be the guy, well, I'm not going to take any of this shit, well, get the fuck out of here. This is radio. This is what we do. Let me, let me ask you something about real life, Scotty, since you know, you know a lot about radio. Do you <laughs> think that there could be a morning show position that was looking for an executive producer in America that wouldn't let him in the, the door to at least interview? Absolutely not. Now, let me ask you this. Do you think there would be a PD job in America that he's not qualified to go for? Absolutely not. So you think he would get both of those? Correct. Uh, E-Rock has you taught still me think... a lot, in fact. He's and... actually been incredibly helpful for me. And where? You mean backstage ba here? In terms of behind-the-scenes stuff? Yeah. There, there's obviously... Does it surprise you, E-Rock? A little bit, because I don't know what the fuck I, I've taught you. I had very little interaction with you. Well, in... Other than you sitting with your legs crossed real fancy out on the recliner waiting for us to get out so you could set up the studio. Well, with chris out last week i was in charge of every single time ron and fez have a replay mm -hmm. i've been cutting that one up. i didn't help you with that i was been using your computer all last week and okay I, and so that's not me helping you you, you use my you desk you've 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 talked to me in terms of uh, my first week i was all jumbled had a bad week and you gave me a perspective on the differences and how you can fit in on the show you had an entire talk with me outside the studio okay so 
if I helped you, I don't remember this conversation, but I'll take your word for it because probably I did. So if we had this conversation and I actually took some time to help you, so now it's, wow, you're a fucking idiot. You don't know what you're doing. I never How said are you in this business? You don't know what you're doing. I've never said that. Really? Uh, this last hour just seemed to be translating to not just to me, but to Franklin, to Dave, to a few other people. Nobody fuck knows what the fuck they're doing other than Scott. Scott it's knows not, everything. It Scott's wasn't entitled anything to, do to everything. Engineering. It had nothing to do Let me with behind this, the Scott, scenes on the OPN. Because mission. you're telling us how you'll use every advantage to your fu you know, future thing. But you think a guy like Elon Rock could fuck you up if you ever decided to work in radio? You think he could call people and say, this guy's a douchebag? Correct. Don't he could him? blackball. He could blackball me, definitely. So how does this follow your philosophy? It's because Iraq is confusing my perspective on his radio talent, which is being able to do the things he does for the Opie and Anthony show, which is cut up audio, getting everything done, and being a producer on that show with his personality and how he handles himself. We were talking about our ability to socialize, our ability to try to find somebody that can suit yourself, and how you handle yourself mm -hmm. when you're walking around the halls here. And that's where I was criticizing, because the person I feel that out of everybody on 202 and 197 that has the least regard for themselves in terms of public demeanor would be Eric. And he, we kind of transform this into his skill sets radio, in which case he transcends me. I understand that. But for a uh, holistic human, I just don't know that Eric's complete at that yet. You're an eight, you said, in regular life, right? In terms of ranking myself, I don't know where I would stand, but where I usually would you, aim. Where would you put Eric as a person living a life? Career, he has a great one, and I completely agree with you. So overall, that's worth give some him an points. Overall. But I would say Erock's at like a, a six right now, even though he's got a great position, but he just doesn't hold himself well. Six is still failing. So you're right? basing that's a D, you're Ron. Ba so you're you're gonna really? you're going back to high school mentality here, where you're basing Seven, the uh, the personality and success of somebody based on their physical appearance. No. The, the, really? Because it just no. sounds like you're saying, well, hold. Look, I, I hold know yourself. I'm a little overweight, but you're saying, well, he doesn't really take care of himself so as a human he's not really uh happy with himself you he also doesn't conduct said himself he well. has a shit position he should have left it years ago you said that shit early. on shit on but you said lot. he should have left and moved on years ago much like dave is trying to do with me and fez and try to move up no i mean that in the right way but you're acting like dave is you know heading in the right direction iraq is not um iraq because i see Dave trying to push his Sam and Dave. He's trying to get, he finally locked down that Saturday Night Block, which I'm really happy for him. Um, and he's got his own brand, his own spinoff that he's got working. My concern is that, um, and Eric said he has some stuff going on behind the scenes. Um, I would want I mean, I'm not trying to be okay. a life coach here. So, no, no, it no, seems like failing it. at that too. So you're saying that, alright, in Dave's case, you know he's taking the shot and Sam because they're 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 trying to make something they're going on the air. So now you're equating that in order to be successful, they're going on the air, but you're not going on the air, so you're not no. doing that well. No, you're not, you don't really have any momentum. You don't have a future because I'm not doing what Sam and Dave does. No. There's a public perspective of forward momentum. You see what I'm kind of saying there? That only counts for so much, though. Yeah, the public perspective because of you're the product you're putting on, out, and you're putting but there's everything... also a whole world behind it. That has to build up that public perspective. Correct. But you're okay? putting a lot of weight on career. And that, I think everybody will agree, is, hey, I've got a great career. And you can't hang your entire hat on that. You also have to have other types of... How the fuck of... do you know what I do outside of the show? All I was asked was you know, based on the You're assuming that my life is the, career, is, uh, is the show, is this career. So when I go home, do I just sit and wait until 6 a.m. when the show starts again? Well, I do you, nothing? That, that was the point, is that I don't see you no, go you home. No, you didn't make a fucking I point. You're talking you in circles. Home. I don't see you go home. So you're commenting Therefore, on something you know nothing about. You're making assumptions. You, I, you're here. That's not an assumption. You are here at I was working until Friday. somebody texted me that this asshole is spouting off at the mouth about everybody and doesn't know shit. Who so I came you? by to listen to it, and you're going off about stuff you don't have any idea about. And this doesn't really help whether it, if I had anything to do with you being hired in this business or not. You're this doesn't help based on the so fact much. that other people will hear this and get the the perception of, well, wait, why would I hire this guy if this is the way he's going to act towards these people? He's going to do the same shit in my organization. Well, you missed, you missed it. We weren't talking completely about career. We were, we were talking about whole, uh, being, being a complete human. And you are hanging your head on, hey, I have a job and you don't. So we're going to keep on pounding that point. But you can't just look at things. You no, have to say, that's what you brought up. I'm not friends? flaunting. I have a job. I know I have a job. You're at my job. Correct. <laughs>
I know this. Oh, we're sorry. But I'm not... <laughs> well, you know, sorry, you know what I mean. But you're saying, so you're, I'm basing this all on career. You're telling me I'm a shitty human being, but you don't even know me. But then on the other side, oh, you Public helped me perception. out that first week. You talked to me when I was flailing around, didn't know what was going on. Yes. So I'm a shitty human being who took time to help you during my busy schedule when I didn't even know you. And now you're going to say, oh, because he doesn't carry himself but well? But here's what I'm trying to tell you is that that can be t taken in so many ways, and you have to be concerned about how other people see you. Okay. So you saw me as, hey, he's vulnerable, let me help him out. But did you ever, if you can concentrate on two things, how does it come across to the other person of, oh, I see a weak human being, maybe I can find a friend. Okay, how other people see me. Who is having this problem other than you? I don't know if you've noticed, Eric, but yeah. there's a lot of people that, that take dumps on you when you're not around. Okay. Like who? Um, Anybody in this room? Yes. Oh. Um, my review's coming up next week, and... Don't fucking lie. <laughs> don't don't just start putting words in my mouth, dude. I'm being dead fucking serious. Look, you have a problem with Eric, and you're gonna fight. Don't say, I fucking talk shit about Eric. When? Give me one fucking example. Even if he did, there's a lot of history with me and Dave, with Sam he and myself and whatever. Made that we up. all do that, okay? We all talk shit about each other, you whether it's like serious or not. You sound like you're talking shit behind Eric's back. He just made that fucking shit up. Give me, cite the exact example of um, me talking shit about when, Eric Nagel. I've never talked shit about anyone from ONA ever. When we were, uh, when you're doing your, your Sam and Dave show... You were saying about how Eric was supposed to be here and he's late, and I want you to cut up the Ron Bennington interviews, but Eric's not here on. What are you yet. fucking I have talking to do with about? Ron Bennington interviews? He, no, what that I makes was no cutting sense. Up. And I never said Eric was late ever. I said he can get here fucking fun. He can show up five minutes before the show because that's all he has to do. He's helping us out. You're fucking lying now, Scotty. And is that part of your salesman game? Because now no, using people you're no, no, no. Because now you're trying to sell so hardly that you're hardly? now no longer being honest. You just fucking revealed yourself right there. I swear on both of my children, this whole fucking thing is a total fabrication. You're fucking lying, and you're smiling at me. And you know what, fucking Scotty? I do have the power to fucking do shit. Don't fucking... You you can throw me under the do bus. Do you feel like you got busted, Dave? Do you, he do you feel like you've been exposed? He, he can pretty throw passionate me right here. under the bus. He can do what he wants. You, you notice how I didn't speak up when Scotty was saying I was yelling, I was running a crazy ship. I didn't fucking talk because Scotty was telling the truth. But this is a total fucking lie, and it's to get the fuck you 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 can't take the heat that you're dealing with E Rock right now because he's starting to fucking win their their fight. With what? So now you want to take the distraction off of you and E Rock and blame the place to blame on someone no, else. No, when somebody asks me either, to bring Scotty. up an example, I'm going to be honest and give it to them. I never said that, Scotty. You Did fucking, you say you it? Fucking lie. Did you say it, Dave? On my kids. Did oh, I not say that? That's big. You said it about your kids? On no. my children. <laughs> you know what he he's did. fucking lying. And this is part of your strategy. I'm just going to go out there and sell. It's going to be, it's like superficial. This whole world's superficial. You know what? You just revealed it. You're sub superficial, you lying motherfucker. Well. Now you're pissed off at him? Ronnie, I'm pissed off. You might be able to hear my voice. I'm pissed off because he should know not to just lie to save his own ass. And that's exactly what you did. There is certain things you can do. You can throw the guy under the butt. He's smiling because you know what? He gets it. He gets everything about radio. He gets it 100%. He's smiling because this is a whole why, bit why are, you, why are you smiling, This is a bit, Scotty. though, Ron. This isn't real. Because I'm confident in what I have to say. Because you're and lying. What is it, let me just ask you. What is it that you're confident about that... that that what you say about because this, if you're Dave doesn't respect Iraq is what you're saying. Dave, if you want my opinion because mm -hmm. it's only hearsay, if I was to try to analyze the situation, I would say that Dave needs things, and when Dave wants something, he'll try to grab whatever resource he can. What whether are you it's talking about, it's, we needed a board up. Correct. Actually, it was fucking Sam and who, who had the Rock. They work together. Did you fucking not put that together, Sherlock? Correct. Sam said, oh, you know what? Chris, who's our usual guy, is dealing with his shit. I'll go ask E-Rock. And then why shit. was I not fucking grateful? You didn't have to have a show that week. But you you decided. You said you, to, you, you have you, a lockdown block. You, you could have taken out, two weeks Scotty. off. Wait a minute. No offense to, to Chris Stanley, but you're just, you just told Dave that the talent of the show doesn't have to do a show if their producer slash board op isn't available. He could have. 
because we they did. Down the block. As you pointed out, we're trying to do to get this fucking show on, off the ground here. So we're not going to fucking take weeks off every time the weather gets a little rainy. You fucking understand that? No, because you're but you're going to have to take a break this NYU week anyway. You spoiled brat. But you're going to have to take a week off anyway. So you're, you're already off they the They just rip. got the time slot. Why would they take Let's off take as off. they were just no, handed wait, the time wait, slot? Where's Sam? I want to go ask him. Let's take off till July. Scotty says we shouldn't work anymore. Sammy. Sammy, we're off till July. Sam's gonna love that. He's gonna have he's gonna have plenty of Saturday nights off. But why would you for have one show? His wrestling why would you have gig one that show? pays him. Hold on. He has a fucking opportunity to host a show every Saturday night, and he doesn't fucking do it, even though that pays him because he wants to get the Sam and Dave show off the air. But that, that show's also shit. That that, no, it's know. great. That oh, it wrestling is? show is fantastic. I never heard it. Huh. Oh, I, Sam, Sam, you're here. Well, guess what? We Sam. can take off till July. You know why? Sam, Scotty says I don't it's okay. know this. I have an intern who knows how all your guys' lives should be running. Yeah. And which one of them... All right, rank them right now if you had to in positions in life. All right, between uh, Sam, Iraq, Dave, and Iraq? Yeah. All right, we got um, probably the most person who has... Uh, the most happening. The most happening is probably Primetime Sam Roberts. Okay. Um, he's got a nickname. That helps mm -hmm. um, to know himself by. Which I made you up. You do too, and it's not helping you. <laughs> um... <laughs> Well, and then we got probably under him would be Dave, and then last would probably be Eric in okay. terms of having things going on. Mm. Okay. And that's not just because the career, they have a show, but the way they carry themselves, which is what my point was. The Your point the is that Erod carries himself like shit. Correct. <laughs> He's already sitting down. And he's I'm already become exhausted. <laughs> tiring. He's, he's tired. <laughs> you know, fighting is hard. Who cares, so he has Scotty? To take a nap. Scotty, here's the point. Not everyone <laughs> does your spiel, as you said uh, a few moments ago. Not everyone fucking has the same rap, which is this shallow bullshit. I uh, don't know anything about Are you about using anything. urban terms to try to relate to me? Shallow <laughs> fucking uh, Here's Queen's what I just want to say to Sam and Iraq. And, uh, you can understand one day you could work for this cocksuck because that's the way <laughs> fucking America works. Yes. That's what it gets to me. But if they get sales jobs. The problem is, like, I've been listening mm -hmm. and, like, he's talking about, like, his branding. He's trying to right. set up this brand. The problem is, the brand that you've effectively set up for yourself today on public airwaves is of an asshole who comes into a situation with no knowledge, far too young to understand any of it, who thinks that he's got it all figured out. Who's shitting on the most liked person on the ONA staff by the entire company outside of this small channel? Who would that be, Sam? Sam? That would be oh. Eric oh, okay. Nagel, <laughs> is the most well received person on and, the ONA staff. And probably the most connected. And Absolutely. Probably in terms of huh. being able to say, hey, this is a good kid, uh, give him a shot, or I don't like this kid. I guarantee you, Iraq knows more people in the business I than agree. I know, or Fez it's, knows. I don't understand if we're setting this up as fear mongering, like, okay, well, you're now you're blackballed. You're not no, going to at all. Who but, gives a shit? It's about on, you. God. It was about I see, and the callers picked up on it on just my fear of not wanting to end up like that in the, in a couple. Or not of years. taking a chance but, that you might fail. Who are you branding? I don't. Who are you branding yourself to? A corporate audience or a public audience? Because the public thinks you're an asshole. Not necessarily. How do you, Did you know the that? Because people agree with my perspective on you. It's all bullshit. Just sift past it. Be honest. As opposed to being like the behind the back, keep this closed up, guys. You have to step out there and say, listen, I think you're a douche. But it's been well, it's been established throughout this hour that you don't know what you're talking about because you don't know E Rock and you don't you know made Dave. Up conversations and you don't know me. me. Like, none of this is relevant. You don't know what you're talking about, but you think you're an expert. So the public thinks you're an asshole. Are you talking about public in terms of the this people hallway? listening? This hallway. No, no, no. We're actually on the radio. You know okay. what he's the public talking can hear. about? Correct. Right. So the public, uh, and as far as this but company, we're talking about Iraq's e connections within the company and what he can do. And I'm talking about how you hold yourself and how you stand but I'm and talking how you about walk around. How you are holding yourself right now is Correct. of somebody who is it's a phony. You're a shell. You have nothing. It's backing up like you, you you talk fast, but as we've been talking to you throughout the hour, it's been become clear that you there's nothing but, backing the, it up. But, there's no information. What you're saying has absolutely no examples. You're saying, hey, listen, you're a phony. Period. The end. You have to have something because you, that. you're saying that Eric is the lowest person when he's the top he person. Is, literally in this in this studio. Listen, right if now. the if the Opie and Anthony show, <laughs> yeah, if it ended today, if Correct. that if the last show was on today, the one person who I can guarantee you. 
would have a job within a week on talking in this about industry. Careers, and there's more to a person than careers. I keep on trying to push this point. But Eric, there's more than being, hey, I'm Eric Nagel. Check out my business card. I'm a producer. Do you understand the difference between Eric Nagel, the <laughs> but brand? But you say producer is something to be embarrassed of? No. Absolutely not. Seems but you, like there's so much. There's so much more to Seems a person. Like what you are their hobbies? Stagnant. What are this their is... hobbies? What do they like to do? I, do? I was talking to Eric the other week. Hey, Eric, what are you doing this weekend? I'm going to go and collect action figures at Comic Con. I never there's... said that. <laughs> really? In fact, in fact wait, 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 we brought it up so. Monday after the event. I should have seen you there. Fez goes to Comic Con. <laughs> do you think Fez is less of a person? Well, we haven't asked him what he thinks of Fez. Be honest. And be honest. For once in your life, be honest. For once in my life, um, I think Fez is conflicted. He hasn't decided. He hasn't decided whether he wants to move forward or backwards. He's dancing, and he, he can either fix his problems or he can't. But he has to first decide that he wants to. And Fez can decide I'm going to conquer this, or he can he can push it. But again, and Sam's pointed this up is that I don't have every single answer and you're coming to me like a muse you can ask me my opinion but everything i have to say is only hearsay i can only give you my opinion and why i mentioned that i was scared to be iraq is because i i feel that's not who i want to be but just because you heard dave fucking slagging iraq behind his back <laughs> and yes you did he, constantly. he fucking he heard you say me. he didn't catch he me he's say. lying to you guys a guy fucking comes in on his day off to fucking help yeah. you, he didn't and say you it. slag him to the intern. Didn't happen though. That's the funny thing. And actually, didn't it happen, Scotty. He's crossing his hands under his armpits. And what's that, that mean? That's, 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 a, that's, totally that's a tell. <laughs> that's a tell. He's a liar. Oh. I didn't. Mary You're Catherine being Gallagher. Gallagher. Didn't, He's reading you. His, I did his not face is a little it. redder than normal. I didn't, Scotty. The, now my lack of communication and the, how Scotty needs to approve on that isn't such a crazy remark, is it? Um, I just communicated. You're everything terrible. That you said. You're terrible at communicating because. As you're speaking, you're coming up with more lies in your head. That's why your comments are ringing to be shallow. It's because you can't, you're not thinking of what you're saying. You're thinking of the next fabrication. Sorry, hmm. you've been caught by Davy MacDonald. <laughs> did you or did you not say something bad about it? On Dave? my children, my God, my Jesus, my mother and father, my three brothers... Two of their wives, because the other one had some problems in California. Do your children believe in Jesus? Wow. What the fuck? Are well, are they, are they being raised as Jewish you, or, or, or you, Catholic? Scotty, really? <laughs> this guy is fucking Mr. Ripley. He's Matt Damon in the fucking movie. He has... You are nothing. You are right. not a person. I thought you meant this to is, believe it or not. No. Is, all right, l let me just uh, take a little time here to play uh, guess the Twitter, because you... Uh, wanted to come back with uh, how you're being perceived out there in the world, okay? Who's this? Who is this? Who the fuck is this piece of shit trashing Iraq on the run on Ron and Fez? You stupid motherfucker! <laughs> Try to guess that Twitter. Franklin? Nope. That was Opie. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So. Again, it's a very. This is your first time, really, with any extended time to talk on the radio. Yeah. Um, I'll give you this: you're getting known quick. You are yeah, getting known evil. fast. Uh, does that surprise you, or do you think that Opie goes because I bust Iraq on my it's show? It's okay for everybody. No, I want everybody to. No, this is my this is my opinion. I'm not trying to gain brownie points. It's just. I, you, you can't, everybody, you can't trump yourself up and say I have the job and just put every every chip in that basket. You have to have so much more. There's lots of guys with great jobs that can't find any type of happiness. But he, Iraq's got happiness. What more can Iraq have? Yeah, how am I miserable? He used to sit at home listening to the Opie and Anthony show at a miserable job in radio with a crazy woman by his side thinking, now that's a life I'd like to have. So he found Opie and said, I know you don't have a show anymore, but can I have a job when you do? He got a job. He has a wonderful apartment. He's got a fiancé. They're both making money in a mm -hmm. terrible economy. And well, she's you gorgeous. Know this, segment, this segment started as Scott... What are you scared to end up as? And I thought very quickly on who around, who around me am I scared to turn out like? And that's the question I was. It's not in terms of whether a Iraq has happiness. I'm sure he does. Everybody goes for it. But in terms you, of what you I were see, saying I, I wouldn't want to be that. That's something that is, I'm deathly afraid of. What I just described. Of, of how he goes, goes around here. You can... He's very... 
He knows you can write a novel, here. No, Sam. But he, he's looking at, at, at looking at it as a physical aspect because, and translating it as a personal is aspect. Is it because he wore a peanut butter hat on the air? <laughs> Do you understand that a whole world exists oh, outside of the radio show? Oh, we're plugging Vestos now. Um, Whoa. Whoa. Jesus Whoa. Christ. That, that'll be on you, this week. You're taking on the whole day with that comment, by the way. It's what, all day is, what day is Peanut Butter Hat? <laughs> <laughs> this is a great show. Sky, you, you are really talking out uh, with both sides of your mouth. You really are. Well, what should you only talk out one, one. side? Hello. Hi. <laughs> He's um, not a sidewinder. It, 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 everything he was talking about himself wanting, Sam pointed out that E Rock has. And so now you somehow magically say, but he's still a piece of shit. It doesn't make sense now. You, all your fucking superficial shit Because you shit guys are keep on saying down. And, and making radio into this, this giant glamorous Hello, entity. asshole, you're on the radio and you yes. said it. I and fucking that's what I'm saying. About that's, my that's, how solid, that's how solid this entity is. That somebody can just walk in, coming as intern, and say, I don't want to be fucking that guy. Okay, there's that's an interesting glamorous conversation is. going on. Ron and Fez should have went to a break. I, I forgot, Ronnie B, I make it out so glamorous. I wear, I, I show up to a limo. Uh, in a limo to work every well, day. What, I mean, does, what are you saying? I, I've never because your your defense is, hey, look at where he is. I've, He's a producer. What does Iraq you, have? You, you're doing an internship in radio. If yeah, you and think I'm a it's... film student. I have no idea what I want to do. But Iraq right, does, but... and he's got it. Yes, and do you know how many people who get film fucking degrees that never make fucking films? Most. Most. Ninety-five percent of them. But does that mean I don't mean shit? You guys, you can crush. It, it feels like you're trying to crush my hopes, and no, it's kind uh, of we mixed. We don't know what your hopes are. You came you in and said did it what he's done with your mouth. What he's done with his life is fucking shit. It's almost like you shouldn't try. Like I'm well, still. Well, tell I don't us know what, what you're do. trying. I'm pushing to find out what I want to do. All the only person I can represent is is is. Is sorry to refer to myself in third person. Is Scott? Is me? You're, you're so, condescending because you're saying you know some people might uh, carry. And you're a liar. Some people. I'm not. A liar. <laughs> will, you, will you talk behind no, Iraq's back? No, no, no. Scott, you lied. Some people deliver milk. They might be really happy delivering milk, but well, you have a very condescending attitude it, towards people who don't fit your. And it, it's an interesting thing here, Scott. One of the things, and I didn't bring it up when you said it, but now that he did, when you started talking about garbage men. If you live in this fucking country, and I'll use this city in particular, if we didn't have fucking garbage men, you wouldn't be able to walk down the fucking street. The infrastructure is so important. You're absolutely right. So for you to act like somehow what you've achieved by being a film student brings more value to this city than a garbage man, you couldn't be more wrong. Mm -mm. And I'll tell you something else. Being a garbage man in this city is a very high-paid job. It's also a very fucking dangerous job. Correct. So don't act like somehow, uh, as you're going around talking about humanity, some of us are these eights and some are twos that it's fucking based on looks. But if you, the infrastructure is so important, and just as Iraq is a producer, and that's so important to the Opie and Anthony show, mm -hmm. just as Dave and Chris are so important to the Ron and Fed show, but I feel that I'm more malleable. I can switch into anything. I can move in any direction. Even if you're a teacher, you can have career opportunities to go up and become superintendent. If you're a garbage man, you can just maybe be the best being, fucking garbage yeah, man you can be. Yeah, but maybe being a teacher is fucking great. It I is. mean, if you fucking affect one fucking life. I don't know, for not having achieved anything yet, you're pretty fucking sure how everything runs. And I do wish that we could keep beating up on you for a while, but we do gotta move on. Sounds like a plan. Uh, I will... Uh, See you at your trial. I'm going to be there <laughs> when they find the bodies in the fucking basement. We're going to break here, Fezzi. Uh, we'll be right back and pick it up. Thanks a lot, e Rocks. Thanks a lot, Sam. Um, what time do you normally get in here? I get in here at 9.30. Oh, I'd hide. I would. <laughs> I'd start I'll making it. here at 10.30. Yeah, I'd make it 11.05 because <laughs> they're going to pull you into the room. And then you're going to have Danny. Oh, to send, uh, <laughs> it's going to be a little rougher with than you remember. Of, yeah. With uh, a couple in the oh, oh, okay. oh, a couple okay. of dicks he's <laughs> acting like. Jesus. Here comes the work drunk and then he wants a <laughs> cog. <laughs> Calming things down, hosing off the floor. Our young intern. Scotty too hottie. Started a firestorm in here earlier. At one time, at one point, I just saw uh, Pepper Hicks just glaring at him. And it looked like one of those scenes that finally someone gets shot. <laughs> that the guy who never speaks up just shoots the guy who keeps talking. He almost ended up in a wood chipper. But at least we caught 
Dave lying. I didn't lie. That had to come out. Scotty lied. I was also glad to see Opie uh, gave a uh, a ringing Twitter of endorsement until his, until his own E-Rock. Well-deserved. 